Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm here at Rock Island again today, taking a look at the cool guns in the September 2014 premiere auction. And one of the extremely rare ones that jumped out at me was this rather trollish looking pistol. This is a Karl Kernka, I'm probably mangling that name, but we'll go with it. Uh, prototype, this is serial number seven, model 1895 automatic pistol. Uh, Kernka doesn't get a lot of respect today. A lot of people don't know who he is but he was actually quite the prominent uh, Austro-Hungarian firearms designer. He was originally born in Romania, part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire at that time. And he was responsible for a whole line of uh, Austro-Hungarian military firearms, which actually began with this very pistol. So this was the 1895 design. It's self-loading, has a 10-round internal magazine, long recoil action. We'll take a look at the mechanics in a minute. Um, this developed into the 1897 model, which then evolved into the 1899 model, which then evolved into the 1904 model, which then finally, at the end of its development, became the Rothsteyer 1907, which we've looked at in, before. Um, compared to these guns, the 1907s are rather common. Uh, by most standards, the 1907s are, are pretty exotic guns. They had this a very early, very innovative double action only trigger mechanism that's very reminiscent of today's safe action pistols. Very cool guns. And it all started with this, the 1895 model. So this one has a serial number seven on it. It also has an 1897 Austrian military acceptance mark. Um, don't know the story behind that, but it's pretty cool. Um, Pictures are out there of these guns, but they really don't do justice to just how huge this gun is and, frankly, how awkward it is. Um, very reminiscent, actually, of, of Frommer pistols as well. Um, massive, massive trigger guard, huge trigger. Um, not, not a very comfortable gun to hold. I expect the, the bore is so high above the action, that, or above the grip, that you get quite a lot of flip from it, despite the fact that it's chambered in a relatively small 8 by 21 millimeter cartridge. So let's come back and take a closer look at the internals of just how this thing works. So mechanically, this 1895 is a really pretty cool, funky, unusual handgun. It is long recoil operated. Now that we kind of have a giveaway for that when we see something of a barrel extending past the frame. That's always a clue that you have probably a long recoil gun. Um, unfortunately, the grips are broken on this side. So long recoil means that the bolt is locked into the barrel and the two of them travel backwards together, locked, for the full length of the cartridge. Then the, the bolt is locked to the rear, the barrel is released, the barrel returns forward, once the barrel's all the way forward, then it releases the bolt, then the bolt comes forward, strips a new cartridge, and chambers it. So we can run the whole action by pulling the bolt back. You can see the two come back together. And then, when it reaches full travel rearward, the barrel snaps forward. The bolt is currently locked open because the magazine is empty. We do have one rather uh, somewhat modern control here on the opposite side. That is a magazine, or a bolt release. So I pull that down, and it allows the bolt to drop. Now this has the locking mechanism here, is a single rotating locking lug. You can see the lug right there. And when I, let, when I let the bolt all the way forward, you can see that it rotates just slightly counterclockwise. Just like that. That's a single lug locking, which is perfectly strong for this mechanism. This is an 8 by 21 millimeter cartridge, relatively weak. Now another interesting feature here, when the bolt is locked open, it's kind of loose and wobbly and does not feel like it's under spring pressure. Typically with a long recoil gun, you need two recoil springs, one for the barrel and a separate one for the bolt because they do travel independently. On this gun, there's a coil spring inside here that operates the barrel. All right. The bolt on the 1895 has a little lever arm right here that grabs an extension on the side of the bolt and that's what puts pressure to move the bolt forward. So when it's locked to the rear like this, 
that lug isn't in contact and the bolt just floats loose, when I press the magazine release, you can see that lug traveling right in front of the barrel, and that pulls it forward all the way until it rotates and locks. The trigger on the 1895 is a double action with a hammer, as you can see. It can be cocked and then fired single action. It can also fire double action. We can actually see a little bit of the mechanism here through the, the unfortunately cracked grip. Um, this would eventually, this design would continue to evolve into the, the rather modern uh, double action only style of the 1907 Roth Steyr. If you look inside through the broken grip, you can see that this is the internal magazine body. There's one coil you can see right there of the magazine spring. This has a 10 round internal magazine fed by stripper clips. All right, so here you can see the follower right there of the internal magazine, and then we have a setup for stripper clip guides as well. And of course, the rear sight. So unfortunately, I can't disassemble this pistol because it is up for consignment uh, for the auction, and of course, the, the company doesn't want to risk any damage to it. Um, but I will say, if I was going to disassemble it, what I would do, we can look at a couple parts, I would start up here on the barrel. Because this is long recoil, it needs a spring around the barrel to, to push the barrel back into place. So this jacket has two gripping serrations on it. We pull those back, and then if I was going to do this, I would disassemble, I'd unthread that nut off the end, then I could take off this piece, and then the barrel spring will come out. I can't do that, of course, but that's what I would do. Then, to get into the body of the pistol, you would take this screw out. There's a nice little thumb notch in there, thumbnail notch. Then this whole side plate comes off the gun, this grip panel comes off, and you have access to all of the internals. The grip panel on the other side is, I believe, attached via screw from the inside. So, um, actually, reasonably similar, similar to the 1910 Frommer, which we do have a good video on. So if you're interested, take a look at the Frommer Stop video, or the Frommer 1910 video, and you can see what this is basically, most likely going to look like on the inside. So, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. We got to take a look at an extremely unusual, very rare prototype pistol here that I think is really neat. It may look ugly, but it's a very cool piece of firearms development history. And if you're interested in being the proud new owner of this, this exact gun, uh, it will be up in the Rock Island auction, September 2014. It's lot number 760. Take a look at the detailed pictures they have on the website, and good luck in your bidding. Thanks for watching.